I'm going to talk uh, on Bloomer and Varieties today and uh, before we start I, uh, I'm going to uh, express my feelings uh, about this uh, lockdown I miss everyone, I miss those times uh, when I could uh, lecture um, in the large uh, classroom where I could uh, see your faces, your eyes, uh, and uh, I could uh, answer your questions uh, alike. But uh, uh, now I'm uh, I'm on lock lockdown uh, for uh, two weeks, and uh, I have to. Um, pay my checks, sir. I, I have to um, do my work and uh, I'm super honest I think and I have to lecture in in the another format uh, in E format uh, new for me uh, completely new and uh, I'm I apologize for the quality of uh, microphone I, I know it uh, doesn't work well um, anyway sir if you don't if you have some troubles I hope uh, I uh, can find the solution for the next time uh, today the topic is uh, extremely complicated for students and uh, I think uh, uh, you need uh, some clarification before you start uh, reading be because uh, uh, the concepts uh, are based on histology, uh, on physiology, and if you don't know them, revise, please. Revise, uh, read again, read again, read again, because uh, you cannot... Uh, accomplish this work uh, um, without uh, the base uh, the, without the basic uh, knowledge about the subject okay so you see the shape of my kidney <laughs> shape of my heart here <laughs> but uh, this one is shape of my kidney yeah so um, you see the glomerulus, uh, glomerulus uh, cartoon, so you see the scheme, how the uh, glomerulus is uh, formed, you see the afferent arteriole, you see the capillaries uh, with the fenestrated uh, walls, you see the uh, small windows in them, uh, allowing the uh, the substances we uh, intended to filtrate uh, to go through and uh, accumulate in urine yeah so we can find uh, uh, some kind of mechanism to protect uh, the proteins uh, um, I mean uh, even small proteins uh, such as insulin uh, to be filtrated so we have the special mechanism in them but uh, most uh, smaller substances uh, are going to be filtrated uh, then these loops uh, go uh, into afferent arteriole uh, and then to heart, of course. Uh, you see the space uh, between the uh, uh, outer layer, outside layer. So the space between the uh, outer layer of uh, Bauman's uh, capsule and um, squamous uh, simple epithelium and uh, visceral cells uh, lining the capillary loops uh, the outside so and you see the distal convoluted tubule 
uh, adjacent to the afferent uh, um, arterial and the junctor glomerular apparatus uh, amongst uh, them between these uh, two structures. So these uh, uh, cells in in the crying cells, to be uh, to be honest, uh, can uh, receive the information, the signals uh, from uh, afferent uh, arterial about the pressing eater and from the uh, distal tubule, from the uh, camera receptors uh, in this uh, wall and uh, it can regulate uh, the pressure in uh, um, in our organism so producing the renin so it must produce renin when it uh, detects uh, the malfunction of uh, glomerulus so the main force uh, uh, pushing our um, our our blood uh, out uh, as um, as urine uh, is a uh, hydrostatic pressure, and if you need uh, uh, more hydrostatic pressure, these uh, apparatus, uh, these cells are going to produce renin. So. The next uh, cartoon uh, showing us uh, the same scheme. So you see the capillary loops, sir. Uh, you see the capillary loops there uh, in the telal cells, sir, uh, uh, parietal cells uh, of uh, capsule, uh, visceral cells, sir. Uh, uh, with uh, small feet uh, uh, on the surface of uh, basal membrane. Uh, these uh, feet uh, are considered to be a part of a uh, mechanism uh, protecting us uh, from uh, losing uh, proteins, uh, polypeptides. Uh, also, you see the cells uh, amongst uh, vessels, uh, so-called uh, mesangial cells, uh, mes referring to between and angio vessels, so the cells are between vessels, between capillaries. Uh, it means that uh, um, they are strong. Okay, mesangial cells uh, that are stromal cells sir, in terms of capillary loops. Sir. So they support uh, the capillary loops, uh, they support uh, the capillaries sir, and uh, it provides uh, uh, the, um, the proteins uh, that are stromal for, for them. What else? Sir? You see the afferent arterial, afferent arterial, a like uh, um, mm -hmm. Next uh, picture uh, of the part of glomerulus, it's uh, just a part, uh, you see the, um, a half of uh, a half uh, glomerulus. Um, what else? You see the distal convulsive tubule. Um, originally it uh, must be um, a little bit uh, wider but uh, in this view you see the narrow lumen uh, also you see the juncta glomerular apparatus uh, between glomerulus and uh, distal tubule I've explained why you need uh, 
to detect uh, both uh, the pressure in uh, uh, afferent uh, arterial and the concentration of sodium in uh, distal tubule in the distal tubule okay so next one uh, you see there in the telos cells uh, in the telos cells you see there uh, nucleus of the um, heterochromatine eochromatine eochromatine heterochromatine uh, sir, so epithelial cells sir, uh, that are visceral uh, nephrocytes. The feet are with disaster. Uh, small processes sir, um, linking their main part of cytoplasm and uh, basal membrane. Basal membrane here. You see, the basal membrane is there alike. The sangual part, yeah, the, the, the stromal part of glomerulus. So, um, I don't know how to describe her, uh, the pathology, um, the diseases, uh, with all the approach we have uh, um, uh, to the patients uh, in nephrology. So, in most cases, uh, we have detected the pattern uh, our patient has. Uh, in order to rule out uh, a lot of uh, um, possible diagnosis. Uh, so, what are um, presentations, manifestations of uh, glomerular uh, pathology? Uh, proteinuria, when you lose your proteins uh, uh, by urine, Hematuria, the same with blood. Of course, sir, uh, if you have uh, hematuria, it means sir, the larger um, gaps are in the basal membranes, uh, larger gaps in the barrier between uh, blood and urine. Um, nephrotic syndrome, severe proteinuria, hypoalbuminemia, and edema. So, uh, first uh, thing, uh, first off, uh, I, I have to discuss is syndrome. So, you know, syndrome is a set, uh, stable, um, stable set of uh, symptoms and signs. Uh, why are they sad? Um, they are sad uh, because uh, they have uh, something in common pathogenesis. They have pathogenesis in common. So, uh, most, uh, uh, most symptoms uh, are explained uh, by pathogenesis. In this case, you see nephrotic syndrome where we are protein urea lead, leads uh, to hypoalbuminemia. So, we have the low level of albumins in blood and edema we have discussed this in edema you, you can remember on uh, low oncotic pressure hypoalbuminemia uh, results in um, edema oncotic edema nephritic syndrome you have to uh, differentiate these two and in nephrotic syndrome you see their uh, mechanisms are uh, quite uh, uh, dystrophic benign you have uh, small gaps sir uh, small gaps in uh, in the barrier uh, while in nephritic syndrome uh, the barrier is destroyed uh, with uh, a lot of red blood cells sir, in urine hematuria variable degree of renal insufficiency okay so nephrotic syndrome is uh, um, is known as uh, 
dystrophic um, is a result of dystrophic uh, changes. Uh, mostly um, diabetes, uh, hypertension, pregnancy, some some other types of um, so uh, some benign types of uh, lamellar pathology, but nephritic syndrome is uh, much more acute, yeah, so much more acute. Uh, rapidly progressive lumeral nephritis, sir, uh, when you have uh, severe insufficiency or failure, or renal failure, acute renal failure, oligorrhea, so you have uh, um, few or little urine, yeah, little urine, and azotomia, the uh, accumulation of uh, azotic, uh, nitrogenic uh, substances in blood are normally excreted with uh, the, with uh, kidney. Uh, chronic renal failure, so some chronic diseases uh, or even uh, uh, rapidly progressive nephritis uh, um, lead to sclerosis of glomeruli, so you don't have uh, the capillary loops anymore, uh, so they cannot filtrate, they cannot subserve uh, uh, the function of uh, kidney and uh, you need uh, just uh, transplantation. So, um, acute versus uh, chronic uh, um, primary versus uh, secondary or systemic, you know, um, we have discussed uh, hypertension and uh, the renal form of hypertension uh, um, is uh, explained as uh, um, nephrotic syndrome in mild form, sir, and uh, chronic renal failure uh, as a result of prolonged uh, um, benign hypertension. So it's uh, an example of secondary systemic uh, um, syndrome, sir. Uh, systemic glomerular disease or secondary uh, glomerular disease. So the next one, uh, you see the um, classification of glomerular disease by histologic pattern. Some of them are intrinsic, it means that uh, the changes are seen in, uh, in their um, glomerular tuft, uh, mesangial proliferation, they do it uh, a lot uh, as a reaction uh, to uh, the injury, in the tail, in some cases, uh, visceral patellum, not as much. Um, Extrinsic uh, parietal epithelial cell proliferation, crescent formation, that's uh, uh, quite common uh, as a result uh, uh, of necrosis to the glomerular tuft and liberation of fibrin into the Bowman's capsule and uh, excites uh, the epithelial cells. So, inflammatory cell infiltration, especially by neutrophils or, or necrosis. Uh, chronic uh, changes we can find in chronic glomerulonephritis or chronic glomerulopathy. Mesangial matrix, uh, capillary basal membrane expansion, fibrosis, uh, scarring in areas of uh, antecedent uh, necrosis. Uh, uh, or sclerosis. Uh, these two look similar, but uh, they are different uh, because uh, sclerosis is overgrowth of the glomerulus uh, with fibrous tissue, um, 
b and uh, the type of telem is distinct and so they are, uh, are distinct when we stain them with uh, special um, techniques so in this uh, picture you see the um, proliferation of uh, mesangium uh, you have seen just uh, two cells uh, or even one mesangial cell um, in uh, such uh, area but uh, here you see a group of a uh, dozen um, you see the normal uh, parietal cells of uh, abutments capsules or um, it looks like a uh, uh, mesangial proliferative uh, uh, glomerulonephritis caused by immune complex uh, diseases. Next one. In this picture, you see the proliferation of parietal cells forming uh, the crescent. crescent. Uh, you can compare the shape with uh, the um, moon yeah so it's uh, like a uh, crescent um, um, in the same time you see the necrosis as a cause of uh, uh, crescent formation so that uh, as you understood her uh, um, necrosis is uh, a marker of uh, uh, very strong offender, very strong uh, harmful factor. Um, so we see that uh, in uh, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, uh, uh, in a situation when uh, the uh, kidney stops uh, filtrating, you see that uh, this. Uh, this glomerulus is excluded from uh, filtration uh, it cannot filtrate anymore uh, because her uh, parietal cells blocked uh, the urinary spaces uh, so again the proliferation of mesangial cells uh, uh, crescent, uh, this is a uh, irritation of uh, parietal uh, cells. Uh, um, this combination is most commonly seen in lupus nephritis. Uh, the combination of extrinsic and intrinsic uh, proliferation, extrinsic and extrinsic with crescents and intrinsic in mesangium. Uh, next one we sir uh, neutrophils uh, in mesangium so neutrophils 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 you see a lot of them polymorph nuclear uh, lymphocytes uh, so what uh, uh, do they do they are infiltrative for cells reactive for, for their damage Next one, fibrinoid necrosis. Fibrinoid necrosis is uh, a factor leading to the crescent formation, as I said. Uh, cell breakdown and bloodstream stuff for such as fibrin and nuclear breakdown products. So you see there, a fibrinoid necrosis in this uh, uh, space, in this uh, part of the analysis. Uh, next one. Um, this uh, uh, glomerulus is uh, damaged chronically for a long time. Why uh, am I sure in that? Uh, because uh, you see the sclerosis, you see the uh, proliferation of mesangial cells with uh, accumulation of uh, proteins uh, in this drama. Also, you see the um, their thickening of uh, basal membranes uh, 
and no inflammatory cells. Uh, this picture is from uh, immune complex depositions uh, to irritate the visceral epithelium and mesangial cells to make more best membrane material to wall over the complexes. Next one. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, you, you can see clearly, but uh, it must be necrosis uh, area where the nucleus disappeared. Uh, crystal formation, crystal formation there, there quite uh, uh, cooler the crescent uh, to observe and uh, formation of uh, scar formation of scar instead of uh, this necrotic uh, tissue so the proliferation of fibroblasts and deposition of uh, uh, collagen Next one, oh, you see the fibrous scar in, and uh, the collagen is uh, um, stained in uh, blue color, in blue color. Next one, a sclerosis, sir, no crescent or adhesion to Bowman's capsule. So you see the urinary space, sir and uh, some collagen accumulation in uh, mesangium in mesangium um, classification of granular disease by histologic pattern i no i don't uh, think that uh, we classificate uh, diseases in this uh, way but we um, can classificate uh, their histologic uh, changes sir uh, uh, so we use these her uh, terms uh, when we uh, describe uh, their slides, when we describe what we see uh, under the microscope. So uh, glomeruli might be involved in the focal or diffuser way. Uh, next picture where you see the um, two normal glomeruli quite normal for me and this one has uh, the crescent uh, crescent uh, and uh, proliferation of mesangium like so this picture is from good posture syndrome uh, with uh, focal Focal involvement. So some of them are, are involved, but uh, the others uh, are not. And another uh, situation when you see three or more glomeruli and all of them have uh, infil infiltrated with neutrophils. Many neutrophils in these glomeruli probably a post infectious process, post-infectious glomerulonephritis or post precocal glomerulonephritis to be concise. Another classification, segmental, when some portions of glomeruli uh, are affected and global with entire glomeruli affected, entire glomeruli affected. So uh, again, these terms are mostly histological um, so you see the segmental process in this case, so some parts are involved there and there, but uh, other parts of uh, this uh, glomeruli are intact. Uh, rest of them are intact. In this case here uh, you see the global involvement, uh, all the parts of glomerulus are uh, um, involved are affected uh, by this process uh, intrinsic uh, cell proliferation proliferation of mesangium in all the parts of glomerulus and uh, 
by gestological pattern when we see the involvement of capillary loops, mesangium or Bowman's space. Yeah. Again, look at this uh, uh, picture. Um, you see that uh, capillary looks uh, normally, completely like uh, normal capillaries, but mesangium is expanded. Uh, with uh, proliferation of mesangial cells and accumulation of uh, some kind of proteins there. In this uh, fluorescent uh, picture you see the accumulation of uh, immunoglobulins A in immunoglobulin A nephropathy. So the, the accumulation of uh, uh, immunoglobulins A leading to injury of uh, uh, glomeruli in that case oh uh, yeah uh, electron microscopy we sir um a couple loops sir with their quite normal uh, properties sir and uh, dark depositions in mesangium so some abnormal depositions there it's a mesangial immune complex disease, so when some um, particles, uh, some uh, immune complexes are um, built up uh, in the mesangial space, uh, irritating mesangium. Um, in this uh, case, you see the expansion of uh, mesangium and uh, thickened uh, basal membranes uh, in loops. Uh, so you see the both uh, mesangial proliferation, so mesangial proliferative and uh, membrane uh, changes. Membrana proliferative glomerulonephritis. We can call that in lupus nephritis. Next one, we see G stained so we, we have to stain uh, their uh, kidney with different kinds of um, uh, antibodies against her uh, her g inguins a depending on our provisional diagnosis next one so in this case you see the involvement of uh, bad membrane with uh, um, immune uh, proteins uh, immune complexes uh, in uh, bad membrane proteins can get through the damaged membrane and uh, damaged uh, visceral epithelium this patient will have proteinuria and nephrotic syndrome so mostly their their accumulation of uh, proteins in this bad membrane. Um, their immune depositions are on the inside side of uh, um, bas membrane can lead to their uh, more inflammatory response, uh, more disease, more changes in the organism. Mesangium, see mesangium there. Next one, crescent. Crescent, not the example of crescent to you. So, classification of glomerular disease by pathogenesis. Immune complex deposition, monoclonal protein, uh, deposition plasma cells, or um, uh, dyscrasia, sir, such as sir, amyloidosis, or epithelial cell damage. Or, such as uh, minimal change disease 
intrinsic defects of glomerulobasement membrane uh, such as uh, irritable collagen biosynthesis diseases. Antibodies against glomerulobasement membrane type 2 hypersensitivity reactions. In the total cell damage uh, such as uh, hemolytical uremic syndrome and other vascular damage like uh, diabetes uh, or hypertension. Immune complex diseases. So we have to discuss them a little bit. We have to discuss the source of antigens. Uh, some of them are uh, auto antigens. Uh, uh, the antigens of our glomeruli in uh, in uh, good posture syndrome, for instance, non glomerular antigens are the anti nuclear antibodies, the antibodies against uh, DNA, or exogenous antigens, uh, what we see in post pericardial glomerulonephritis. Immune comp components sir, might be immunoglobulins, G, M, and A types. Complement components sir, C1Q, C4, C3. Uh, they might be in the uh, mesangium, in uh, um, some uh, in the telal space, uh, in membranos. Uh, uh, nephritis, sir, uh, subepithelial space between the epithelial cells and bas membrane, and intramembranos within their membrane. Membranous glomerulonephritis is uh, the main cause of nephrotic syndrome in in uh, adults. In adults. So you see that antigens are M-type phospholipase uh, A2 receptor or viral antigens. Mm, immune reactants are immobilins G and C3, 3, 3, their components of complement. Complex location, sub-epithelial, sub-epithelial between their sub uh, between their epithelial cells and bas membrane. Unknown how viral antigens get there, but they do. Dystologic uh, diffuse global expansion of capillary bas membranes. Clinically, proteinuria, nephrotic syndrome, chronic cursor, uh, which uh, may progress to chronic renal failure, most common in adults. Uh, uh, especially in uh, males. So the scheme, the scheme normal glomerulus, uh, normal loop, uh, with uh, um, immune complexes uh, in sub epithelial uh, spaces, so between epithelium and bas membrane, as we mentioned. Um, food processes of polycytes are gone and allows proteins to get through. So, the main mechanism to protect us from losing proteins are uh, these feet. They are lost, so they, they uh, allow these uh, um, immune proteins uh, to be accumulated uh, in vast membrane or sub epithelially. Uh, later stage when uh, the vast uh, membrane is uh, thicker and uh, the um, proteins uh, seem to be intramembranous encased by Bas membrane. Next one. Oh, you see there. Um,
the silver stain of um, uh, silver stain and uh, this stain is used uh, to show the basal membrane of uh, uh, capillaries uh, in uh, this uh, in in this part of uh, glomerulus uh, the basal membrane looks like uh, Swiss uh, cheese uh, and it uh, is explained by the accumulation of immune complexes next one uh, complexes in uh, bas membrane stained for inglobulins G so you know uh, even though the complexes uh, we talk about complexes we stain for some kind of in, in the globulins so uh, again immune complex is uh, the um, set of uh, antibodies and antigens. We don't know the antigen to, uh, antigens uh, uh, for every case, but we know that in Gublin's G or in Gublin's A or in Gublin's M must be there as the part of immune complexes. In this case, they stand there for Gublin's G. Again, immune complexes are late stage. Uh, you see their uh, proteins are uh, encased, uh, encased in bas membrane. Post infectious glomerulonephritis, pathogenesis, bacterial components. So um, these bacterial components are uh, streptococcal mostly streptococcal antigens uh, streptococcal antigens uh, similar to our own uh, proteins uh, seen in glomeruli immune reactants bulins g s uh, c3 complex location sub epithelial harms uh, harms so we see them as harms uh, oh that's very important for your test gistologic diffuse global intrinsic cell proliferation with neutrophilic uh, infiltration so in this case you see the reaction of uh, neutrophils uh, against our glomeruli and it must be with uh, uh, hematuria must not it yeah it must be with uh, hematuria with uh, um, nephritic syndrome in uh, more severe cases following infections. Usual results spontaneously occasionally progresses to chronic renal failure, most common in children. Why? Because our children uh, suffer from spectacular infection tonsillitis. So, again, the scheme normal glomerulus and uh, you see the uh, inflammatory cells uh, on on the inside the inflammatory cells in the loop in the um, in the lumen also you see the harms uh, harms of uh, proteins uh, sub epithelially uh, between epithelium withdrawal epithelium and basement membrane outer layer of Bowman capsule of course Diffuse and global hypercellular um, involvement. So you see that uh, all parts of glomeruli are involved with proliferation of uh, mesangium and uh, uh, neutrophilic uh, infiltration. Neutrophilic infiltration is seen better in this slide. When we stain this glomerulus with uh, um, with uh, inflorescent uh, technique uh, against her uh, inglobulins G, you can find this uh, hamster. So you see that uh, some uh, kind of uh, um, light uh, dots, light dots, 
rather than lines. Yeah, so you see them there, 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 there. That's important, I think. Hamster or lumps on the on the basal membrane between basal mem membrane and uh, epithelium. Mesangio capillary membrane proliferate gonadotropic type one pathogenesis. Antigens are unknown in primary cases or viral antigens are in secondary complement dysregulation in uh, uh, C3 nef nephritic factors. Immune reactants variable, usually including C3. Complex location, sub in the tail also. They must be between the basal membrane and in the tail cells. Histologic diffuse intrinsic cell proliferation, the proliferation of mesangial cells with encroachment of mesangial cells into capillary lumens, mesangial interposition, interpositioning. Uh, mesangial cells try to get to the deposits, so they try to get sir. Um, to get uh, the deposits back. Um, nephrotic or nephritic syndrome with uh, hypo complement mere often progresses to chronic renal failure. Nephrotic or nephritic syndrome. So, in some cases, you see that uh, um, one disease uh, can manifest in different uh, manners. It might be because of the severity of disease. So, like in postpecocus glomerulonephritis, you see in mild cases uh, proteinuria, in uh, severe cases nephrotic syndrome. That is a severe form of proteinuria. Um, in the fact, uh, but uh, sometimes we see different uh, syndromes uh, uh, caused by one uh, uh, mechanism, by one uh, uh, pathogenesis. Um, it's uh, explained by uh, different uh, antibodies, different uh, uh, reaction of uh, host. Uh, Something like this, sir. Uh, I, I, I guess. Uh, membrana proliferatic manfratis. You see the um, accumulation of uh, um, of proteins, sir. Where, 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 where? Mesangial cells, sir. Cross, sir. Cross. You see the mesangial cells there. They uh, crawls uh, out on uh, the capillary loop, uh, lays down on a basal membrane layer, visceral epithelial cells uh, uh, look uh, pretty good, so uh, damaging inside and not outside of the loop. So you see the uh, situation when we can predict the uh, immune complexes uh, between basal membrane and endothelium. So, and these mesangial cells are going to eat these uh, um, proteins. Um, pretty cellular um, glomerulus. So, you see a lot of uh, uh, mesangial cells there. Silver stain. As I mentioned, reduplication of the basal membrane, reduplication of basal membrane. So you see that uh, they have uh, two counters, two lines uh, instead of uh, one normal. A reduplication. C3 immunostain showing deposits uh, on the outside of capillary loops. Uh, outside so you see that there inside her uh, wall is uh, not stained at all 
and electronic microscopy with uh, sub in the tallow deposits uh, uh, deposits uh, since there is there yeah deposits are sub in the tallow leaf oh in this uh, picture you see that uh, clearly so uh, mesangial cell processes go into their uh, basal, basal membrane uh, urinary space uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, a lumen of uh, a capillary and uh, of course uh, there The mesangial cells are um, like crawl uh, to the spaces between the uh, um, bat membrane and copper loops. Uh, that is not good, of course. And these deposits again, a, a lot of deposits uh, surrounding the uh, mesangial cells. Oh, there, there, I guess, there. Mesangial cells there with uh, uh, proteins with uh, matrix between them. Dense, uh, but you see that sir, uh, type 2 with dense deposits. So, the last slide for.